Hi everyone, welcome to this class. We're going to paint a landscape today and I already did this test piece. It's actually still wet. Uh, I wanted to um, kind of figure out how I'm going to place the clouds. So overall, when we look at the reference, um, we have these big dark clouds, I guess, and uh, gray clouds. And whenever I paint clouds, I like to use primary colors. So yellow, blue, red. So we're gonna keep this palette pretty simple. And uh, another thing is I, I like to figure out like how I'm going to place them overall. You, in my opinion, like from my experience, you never want to like get caught in trying to match to like every single cloud you see in the reference. It's not important. It's all about light and shadows. So you want to preserve some areas to stay much lighter. That's where you want to add less paint uh, overall. Like I did stay away from some of the areas like over here or here. So those are like the lightest areas. That's where I didn't actually directly add colors there. But we do have some blue sky in there. So once I added my lightest values or lightest colors that I could see in that sky so for the clouds uh, before I started going for all these darks the the shadows the darkest uh, parts of the clouds that's when I applied a little bit of uh, follow blue red shade so these are the colors I'm going to use for this painting so now we need to have them squeezed onto our palettes uh, so you want to have these colors on your palette and you want to have these colors diluted with water and I like to say that uh, you want to have your colors diluted with water to that consistency that I like to call heavy cream like ratio between water and paint so this is what my color palette looks like my palette this is a plastic palette I have raw sienna yellow ochre quinn red burnt sienna van dyke brown imidazolam yellow follow blue there's a little bit of quinn red but as you see I didn't I didn't really mix it that well together so I still have the separation of colors and then indigo here so this is my flat 40 brush this is that one little cloud that I'm gonna uh, keep that light or the, the, the line from the sketch a paper dry I should say that makes more sense this way I did it with my test piece and that's why I'm thinking like well you know what that little highlight kind of is nice there but if I was wetting the back side I wouldn't worry about it so there's my palette this is my yellow ochre some of this imidazolam yellow I'm gonna start slowly this is this is the blend, right? I'm not mixing colors really on the paper. I'm sorry, on the palette, I'm not trying to. I want all of this to happen on the paper. So a little wider strokes. That's why I'm using a flat brush. And this is how I'm kind of mapping this around. Like I'm trying to decide, okay, these are the um, main clouds over here. I want to keep it lighter too. And there's my follow blue. Follow blue is more like a, I'd say milk-like ratio, but I don't have that much on my brush. It's just a little bit. And actually, maybe I need to have it more diluted with water, more water. Because it felt like it wasn't spreading much. But I'm going to go back to add a little more before I start adding this follow blue or, yeah, whatever blue we're using. Maybe a little bit of that here too. Back here, back here. I don't want this to dry yet because I want to actually add shadows uh, into that muddiness. And I don't want that. I want to keep keep the clouds over lighter a little bit. I know they are pretty dark when we look at the reference, but I did the other test piece, and I I think lighter is the way to go actually. And then here I have a separation of colors, which is what I want, but maybe too much of that blue showing. So there's more of that yellow in it now too. It's just now I have a I had a little more of the yellow and now I'm adding a little more of the blue and red for example and it's just kind of like dabbing on the paper in a way and maybe a little bit of that here and here I don't want to lose those nice light lighter clouds but here I could add some more color for example the same thing here and this is like a yellow gray so it, I changed the shade of it which is pretty because now I have different shade of it too and you can do this as long as this is still wet so I'm kind of going to follow that pattern of like how I see this, these shadows kind of um, aligned this way, the shadows going this way. And this is my quill brush size uh, 2. So I'm going to grab these colors. So this is my raw sienna yellow ochre. And this is almost dry. Like I have to hurry up and actually have too much water. It needs to be more like a heavy cream. I'm just going to add this foliage towards some of these areas only. Why like a heavy cream? If you have anything more diluted with water, 
you create blooms and I'm almost like creating blooms here actually because I had too much water at first but I want to keep these shadows there so I can see the shadows so I can show there's there's shadows right I'm trying to follow a little bit my um, sketch line which is kind of hard a little bit to be honest because I did lines for like the clouds and so on but this is kind of like where I think I marked for myself where the grass is going to be the grassy parts so from now on, everything I'm going to add, like the paint, it has to be more like a cream top like ratio between water and paint. Otherwise, it will, the paint I will spread too much and too much water will cause a bloom. There's my Van Dyke Brown cream top and some of this burnt sienna. Again, Van Dyke Brown burnt sienna. I'm just going to designate a couple areas for those shadows where I can place this grass. Pulling the paint, so it's cream top, and just kind of pulling the paint. I wish this was a little still damp, but it's not. So I'm just gonna go towards these the areas that are still kind of wet-ish. Uh, the main key to me is to simplify the sky and to not get caught in painting every single cloud and just kind of go with the flow. It's all about light and shadows always. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.